Hey guys, I had another video planned here, but I just had to stop for this detour because, for me, like everyone else, it always comes back to Tuvix. He stays on all of our minds, a constant quandary, the niggling little problem you can never quite solve. Or can you? Well, let's see. If you have never seen the episode Tuvix, this video will be exceedingly pointless to you, but nonetheless, I will summarize. On Star Trek Voyager, the characters Tuvok and Neelix were sent to a planet to harvest some flowers because of reasons. When they were transported back due to a fluke involving the properties of said flowers, both men were fused into another being known as Tuvix. Tuvix is both men and neither man, someone with all of their thoughts and experiences, but who is his own individual. Or is he? I guess that's the debate. If he is split back into Tuvok and Neelix, is that murder? Or on the other side, is it morally wrong to not bring Tuvok and Neelix back when they have the means to do so? It is a lose-lose situation, because no matter what you do, there is some ethical dilemma. Voyager deals with this with the deft hand it is so often known for, by having Tuvix's screams for help fall on deaf ears, while Janeway makes the unilateral decision to blast his ass into oblivion. Tuvok and Neelix are returned, much to the audience's mild acknowledgement. Whether or not Janeway made the right decision will always be up in the air for people, but that's not what we're here to discuss today. We're here to discuss one intriguing notion that keeps coming up about Tuvix. Could they have had their cake and ate it too? I did a whole hilarious video and music number about the Tuvix episode, and one argument I see constantly is this. What if we just Thomas Rikerd him? In the Next Generation episode, Second Chances, William Riker discovers due to a transporter accident that there has secretly been another Riker living on an uninhabited planet for eight years. Both men are the same guy, just one has a slightly thicker beard and less social skills, what with having lived alone for nearly a decade. Still does pretty well, though. He goes by Riker's middle name, Thomas, to avoid confusion, and much like Tuvix, a good chunk of his story involves forging his own identity. By the end, he travels his own path, and canonically, there are now two Rikers. So here's what people present. What if, in the Tuvix scenario, they just did that? Like, they'd do the Thomas Riker thing, create two Tuvixes, and then just split one of them. Blammo! Problem solved! Is that a valid option? Well, let me give you this finely crafted answer after giving it a lot of thought. No! No, no, no! 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 Why? Why would this be an option? Why would so many people, independently of one another, come to the same conclusion that so fundamentally misunderstands the moral dilemma presented in Tuvix? Look, I don't want to call people out, y'all seem lovely, but this is nonsense. The problem with Tuvix isn't that everyone was bummed out that they wouldn't see Tuvix anymore. I mean, your mileage may vary on that guy, but like, the whole conflict is that he's a sentient being who they're destroying in service of two other individuals. It's like people saw the trolley dilemma and said, hey, what if there were two trolleys and we use both tracks? Duplicating Tuvix just doubles your problem. You still have to kill a guy. And then, the Tuvix you don't kill is still a Tuvok and a Neelix that are trapped in one body. I mean, I guess then Tuvix joins the crew, and Janeway even admitted he was better than Neelix, but I don't know guys, this still seems wrong. But okay, let's just say you want that. Say Tuvix was simply a stellar character, and you want him to stick around no matter the cost. The circumstances that led to Thomas Riker are pretty damn infinitesimal. People aren't just duplicating other people in transporters every day of the week. The planet he was stranded on was surrounded by a distortion field that prevented transport except for a small window every eight years or so. There was a surge of energy from the distortion field just as Riker was beaming out, leading the transporter chief to use a second containment beam. Coincidentally, that transporter beam had the same phase differential as the distortion field, so when he turned off the second transporter beam, Riker's pattern materialized in two different places. It's a whole lot of sci-fi techno jargon nonsense, but I think you can see this is a very specific circumstance. How is Voyager going to recreate that? And why would they recreate that? They'd have to find a similar planet with a similar distortion field and one that matches the phase differential of their containment beams and that happens to be in the middle of its small window of time in an eight year period where transporters can be used. And also all of this while they're stranded in the Delta Quadrant, which they are largely unfamiliar with at this point in time. Additionally, I don't know if they have access to all of the logs on the Enterprise and would even be familiar with the Thomas Riker situation to begin 
with. And then you throw in the details of Tuvix's existence, such as him being made up of two patterns and some sort of bullshit flowers, and how does that affect trying to clone him via transporter beams? You know, I bet if Voyager even thought to do this, Janeway might go ahead just to see what kind of abomination came out the other side. You're gonna be getting some half-melted piles of flesh or something inside out. That much I'm certain of. A fate some might call too good for Tuvix. Can you imagine how insufferable it would be to have Tuvix, Tuvok, and Neelix at the same time? Who wants this? Three of them? Tuvok, fine, but there's already too many Neelixes with the one. On top of that, Tuvix can neither play the trombone nor does he have a peel-off beard, which is another strike against him. I guess maybe I have decided Janeway did the right thing, because Tuvix is best kept but a horrible memory in the back of our minds. He just brings up too many questions we are not prepared to answer. But I don't think duplicating the Thomas Riker scenario would even be possible in these circumstances. Could they have done it? No. But should they have done it? Also no! Thomas Rikering him goes against everything they were trying to say in the episode, as muddled as the execution was. It only multiplies the problem. Whether or not you think it would have been better this way and damn the moral mess is up to you, but it in no way gives the episode a neat conclusion. I know one thing for sure, I can rest easy knowing they never made a copy of that guy, because Tuvix is nothing but a headache. <laughs>